Glenn Edward Greenwald born March 6, 1967, is an American journalist and author best known for a series of reports published from June 2013 by The Guardian newspaper detailing the United States and British global surveillance programs, and based on classified documents disclosed by Edward Snowden, Greenwald and the team he worked with won both a George Polk Award and a Pulitzer Prize for those reports. He has written several best-selling books, including No Place to Hide. Greenwald's work on the Snowden story was featured in the documentary Citizen Four, which won the 2014 Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature. Greenwald appeared on stage with director Laura Poitras and Snowden's girlfriend, Lindsay Mills, when the Oscar was given. In the 2016 Oliver Stone feature film Snowden, Greenwald was played by actor Zachary Quinto. Before the Snowden file disclosures, Greenwald was considered one of the most influential opinion columnists in the United States. After working as a constitutional attorney for 10 years, he began blogging on national security issues before becoming a salon contributor in 2007 and then for The Guardian in 2012. He now writes for and has co-edited The Intercept, which he founded in 2013 with Poitras and Jeremy Scahill. Topic: <laughs> Early life and education. Greenwald was born in New York City to Arlene and Daniel Greenwald. Greenwald's family moved to Lauderdale Lakes, Florida when he was an infant. His parents are Jewish and they and his grandparents tried to introduce him to Judaism, but he grew up without practicing an organized religion, did not have a bar mitzvah, and has said his moral precepts aren't informed in any way by religious doctrine. He received a BA in philosophy from George Washington University in 1990 and a JD from New York University School of Law in 1994. Topic Career Topic Litigation Attorney Greenwald practiced law in the litigation department at Watchtel, Lipton, Rosen and Katz 1994-1995. In 1996 he co-founded his own litigation firm, called Greenwald Christoph and Holland, later renamed Greenwald Christoff PC, where he litigated cases concerning issues of U.S. constitutional law and civil rights. He worked pro bono much of the time, among his cases was representing white supremacist Matthew Hale in Illinois and the neo-Nazi National Alliance. About his work in First Amendment speech cases, Greenwald told Rolling Stone magazine in 2013, To me, it's a heroic attribute to be so committed to a principle that you apply it not when it's easy, not when it supports your position, not when it protects people you like, but when it defends and protects people that you hate. Later, according to Greenwald, I decided decided voluntarily to wind down my practice in 2005 because I could, and because, after 10 years, I was bored with litigating full-time and wanted to do other things which I thought were more engaging and could make more of an impact, including political writing. <laughs> Unclaimed territory and salon In October 2005, he began his blog Unclaimed Territory focusing on the investigation pertaining to the Plame Affair, the CIA leak grand jury investigation, the federal indictment of Scooter Libby and the NSA warrantless surveillance 2001 controversy. In April 2006, the blog received the 2005 Kufax Award for Best New Blog. Greenwald, according to Sean Wilentz in The New Statesman seemed to take pride in attacking Republicans and Democrats alike. In February 2007, Greenwald became a contributing writer for the Salon website, and the new column and blog superseded unclaimed territory, although Salon prominently features hyperlinks to it in Greenwald's dedicated biographical section. Among the frequent topics of his Salon articles were the investigation of the 2001 anthrax attacks and the candidacy of former CIA official John O. Brennan for the jobs of either Director of the Central Intelligence Agency D. CIA, or the next Director of National Intelligence DNI, after the election of Barack Obama. 
Brennan withdrew his name from consideration for the post after opposition centered in liberal blogs and led by Greenwald. In an article for The Raw Story published in 2011, Greenwald criticized the prison conditions in which U.S. Army Private Chelsea Manning, the convicted WikiLeaks whistleblower, was held after her arrest by military authorities. Earlier in an article for Salon in 2010, as a defender of Manning, Greenwald described her as a whistleblower acting with the noblest of motives, and a national hero similar to Daniel Ellsberg. Greenwald was described by Rachel Maddow during his period writing for Salon as the American left's most fearless political commentator. The Guardian It was announced in July 2012 that Greenwald was joining the American wing of Britain's Guardian newspaper, with the intention of contributing a weekly column and a daily blog. Greenwald wrote on Salon that the move offered him the opportunity to reach a new audience, to further internationalize my readership, and to be reinvigorated by a different environment. As reasons for the move, on June 5, 2013, Greenwald reported on the top-secret United States Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court order requiring Verizon to provide the National Security Agency with telephone metadata for all calls between the U.S. and abroad, as well as all domestic calls. On October 15, 2013, Greenwald announced, and The Guardian confirmed, that he was leaving the newspaper to pursue a once in a career dream journalistic opportunity that no journalist could possibly decline. Topic: <laughs> First Look Media and The Intercept. Financial backing for The Intercept was provided by Pierre Omidyar, the eBay founder. Omidyar told media critic Jay Rosen that the decision was fueled by his rising concern about press freedoms in the United States and around the world." Greenwald, along with his colleagues Laura Poitras and Jeremy Scahill, initially were working on creating a platform online to support independent journalism, when they were approached by Omidyar who was hoping to establish his own media organization. That news organization, First Look Media, launched its first online publication, The Intercept, on February 10, 2014. Greenwald initially served as editor, alongside Poitras and Scahill. The organization is incorporated as a 501 c 3 tax exempt charitable entity. The Intercept was in contact with Gutchefer 2.0 during the 2016 presidential campaign, who relayed some of the material about Hillary Clinton, gathered via a data breach, to Greenwald. The GruGQ, a counterintelligence specialist, reported in October 2016. The Intercept was both aware that the emails were from Gutchefer 2.0, that Gutchefer 2.0 has been attributed to Russian intelligence services, and that there is significant public evidence supporting this attribution. Since the Snowden revelations Greenwald has, according to Simon Van Zulen Wood writing for New York Magazine in early 2018, repositioned himself as a bomb-throwing media critic. By 2019, he was serving as a columnist without any control over the site's news reporting. Topic: <laughs> Books. Greenwald's first book, How Would a Patriot Act? Defending American Values from a President Run Amok was published by Working Assets in 2006. It was a New York Times bestseller, and ranked number one on Amazon.com, both before its publication due to orders based on attention from UT readers and other bloggers and for several days after its release, ending its first week at number 293, A Tragic Legacy. His next book, Examines the Presidency of George W. Bush. Published in hardback by Crown a division of Random House on June 26, 2007, and reprinted in a paperback edition by Three Rivers Press on April 8, 2008, it was a New York Times bestseller. Great American Hypocrites, Toppling the Big Myths of Republican Politics, was also first published by Random House in April 2008. 
with liberty and justice for some, how the law is used to destroy equality and protect the powerful, was released by Metropolitan Books in October 2011 and No Place to Hide, Edward Snowden, the NSA, and the U.S. Surveillance State, was released in May 2014. The latter work spent six weeks on the New York Times bestseller list, and was named one of the ten best nonfiction books of 2014 by the Christian Science Monitor. Topic. Global surveillance disclosure Topic. Contact with Edward Snowden Greenwald was initially contacted anonymously by Edward Snowden, a former contractor for the U.S. National Security Agency, in late 2012 indicating his possession of sensitive documents that he wished to share. Greenwald found the measures that the source asked him to take to secure their communications too annoying to employ. Snowden then contacted documentary filmmaker Laura Poitras about a month later in January 2013. According to The Guardian, what originally attracted Snowden to both Greenwald and Poitras was a Salon article written by Greenwald detailing how Poitras' films had made her a target of the government. Greenwald began working with Snowden in either February or in April, after Poitras asked Greenwald to meet her in New York City, at which point Snowden began providing documents to them both. As part of the global surveillance disclosure, the first of Snowden's documents were published on June 5, 2013, in The Guardian in an article by Greenwald. According to him, Snowden's documents exposed the scale of domestic surveillance under Obama. The series on which Greenwald worked contributed to The Guardian alongside The Washington Post winning the Pulitzer Prize for Public Service in 2014. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Detention of David Miranda. In August 2013, the Metropolitan Police detained Greenwald's partner David Miranda at London's Heathrow Airport under Schedule 7 of the Terrorism Act 2000, after he had flown in from Berlin and was changing to a plane bound for home, in Rio de Janeiro. His belongings were seized, including an external hard drive said to contain sensitive documents relevant to Greenwald's reporting, which was encrypted with TrueCrypt encryption software. Greenwald described his partner's detention as clearly intended to send a message of intimidation to those of us who have been reporting on the NSA and GCHQ." Miranda was detained for nine hours and his laptop and other items were seized. He has since attempted to sue the Metropolitan Police for misuse of their powers. According to The Guardian, the claim challenging controversial powers used under Schedule 7 to the Terrorism Act 2000, maintains that Miranda was not involved in terrorism and says his right to freedom of expression was curtailed." According to a later article in The Guardian, Miranda was found to have been carrying an external hard drive containing 58,000 highly classified UK intelligence documents, and his detention was ruled lawful by the UK High Court, which accepted that Miranda's detention and the seizure of computer material was an indirect interference with press freedom, but said this was justified by legitimate and very pressing Interests of national security, members of the Joint Committee on Human Rights JCHR, in the British Parliament said that allowing police to stop and search suspects at airports without suspicion was not inherently incompatible with human rights. MPs and peers said they agreed anti-terror officers should be able to stop, question, request documentation and physically search persons and property even when they did not have reasonable suspicion that an offence had been committed, but urged the government to introduce new restrictions on powers such as strip searches, detentions, and searches of the contents of electronic devices such as laptops and smartphones, and said that these more intrusive measures should take place only when officers had reasonable suspicion that someone was involved in terrorism. In December 2013, Greenwald and Miranda advocated for asylum in Brazil for Edward Snowden in exchange for the fugitive leakers cooperation in investigating the NSA. Brazil's government indicated it was not interested in investigating the NSA. <laughs> 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 
Topic Testimony Topic National Congress of Brazil In a statement delivered before the National Congress of Brazil in early August 2013, Greenwald testified that the U.S. government had used counterterrorism as a pretext for clandestine surveillance in order to compete with other countries in the business, industrial and economic fields. <laughs> <laughs> European Parliament On December 18, 2013, Greenwald told the European Union's Committee on Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs that, "...most governments around the world are not only turning their backs on Edward Snowden but also on their ethical responsibilities." Speaking via a video link, Greenwald asserted that, it is the UK through their interception of underwater fibre optic cables, that is a primary threat to the privacy of European citizens when it comes to their telephone and emails. According to a statement given to the European Parliament by Greenwald, the ultimate goal of the NSA, along with its most loyal, one might say subservient junior partner the British agency GCHQ, when it comes to the reason why the system of suspicion of surveillance is being built and the objective of this system, is nothing less than the elimination of individual privacy worldwide. <laughs> Political views George W. Bush and Barack Obama eras Greenwald is critical of actions jointly supported by Democrats and Republicans, writing in 2010, "...the worst and most tyrannical government actions in Washington are equally supported on a fully bipartisan basis." In the preface to his first book, How Would a Patriot Act? 2006, Greenwald opens with some of his own personal political history describing his pre-political self as neither liberal nor conservative as a whole, voting neither for George W. Bush nor for any of his rivals indeed, not voting at all, Bush's election to the U.S. presidency changed Greenwald's previous uninvolved political attitude toward the electoral process completely, and in 2006 he wrote over the past five years, a creeping extremism has taken hold of our federal government, and it is threatening to radically alter our system of government and who we are as a nation. This extremism is neither conservative nor liberal in nature, but is instead driven by theories of unlimited presidential power that are wholly alien, and antithetical, to the core political values that have governed this country since its founding. Four. The fact that this seizure of ever-expanding presidential power is largely justified through endless, rank fear-mongering—fear of terrorists, specifically—means that not only our system of government is radically changing, but so, too, are our national character, our national identity, and what it means to be American." Believing that it is incumbent upon all Americans who believe in that system, bequeathed to us by the founders, to defend it when it is under assault and in jeopardy. And today it is. He said, I did not arrive at these conclusions eagerly or because I was predisposed by any previous partisan viewpoint. Quite the contrary. Resistant to applying ideological labels to himself, he emphasized that he is a strong advocate for U.S. constitutional balance of powers and for constitutionally protected civil and political rights in his writings and public appearances. Greenwald frequently writes about the war on drugs and criminal justice reform. He is a member of the advisory board of the Brazil Chapter of Law Enforcement Action Partnership. Greenwald was also the author of a 2009 white paper published by the Cato Institute entitled, Drug Decriminalization in Portugal, Lessons for Creating Fair and Successful Drug Policies, Exploring the Role of Drug Policy of Portugal. He criticized the policies of the Bush administration and those who supported it, arguing that most of the American corporate news media 
excused Bush's policies and echoed the administration's positions rather than asking hard questions. Greenwald accused mainstream U.S. media of spreading patriotic state propaganda. Regarding civil liberties during the Obama presidency, he elaborated on his conception of change when he said, I think the only means of true political change will come from people working outside of that two-party electoral system to undermine it, and subvert it, and weaken it, and destroy it, not try to work within it to change it. He did, however, raise money for Russ Feingold's 2010 Senate re-election bid, Bill Halter's 2010 primary challenge to Democratic Senator Blanche Lincoln, as well as several congressional candidates in 2012 described as unique. According to Greenwald, the emergence of ISIS is a direct consequence of the Iraq War and NATO-led military intervention in Libya. Greenwald has been critical of US and UK involvement in the Saudi Arabian-led intervention in Yemen. He wrote in October 2016, the atrocities committed by the Saudis would have been impossible without the steadfast, aggressive support. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump and Russia Gate. Greenwald has criticized many of the policies of the Trump administration. He said, I think the Trump White House lies more often. I think it lies more readily. I think it lies more blatantly. Greenwald also criticized the Democrats' double standard, saying that, Democrats didn't care when Obama hugged Saudi despots, and now they pretend to care when Trump embraces Saudi despots or Egyptian ones. Greenwald said that choosing between Trump and whatever you want to call it, call it the deep state, call it the national security blob, call it the CIA and the Pentagon, is like choosing between Bashar al-Assad or al-Qaeda or ISIS in Syria once the ordinary people of the Syrian revolution got defeated. He expressed skepticism of the James Clapper-led U.S. intelligence community's assessment that Russia's government interfered in the 2016 presidential election. Regardless of the accuracy of the assessment, Greenwald has doubted its significance, stating, This is stuff we do to them, and have done to them for decades, and still continue to do. In December 2018, he said, I do regard the Mueller indictment as some evidence, not conclusive, but at least some evidence finally that the Russians are involved, but that doesn't say the extent to which Putin was involved, let alone the extent to which Trump officials are criminally implicated. Greenwald sees Democrats' rhetoric on Russia as a more serious problem, characterizing it as unhinged. According to Greenwald, the effect is a constant ratcheting up of tensions between two nuclear-armed powers whose nuclear systems are still on hair-trigger alert and capable of catastrophic responses based on misunderstanding and misperception." Greenwald also wrote that the East Coast news magazines are feeding Democrats the often xenophobic, hysterical Russophobia for which they have a seemingly insatiable craving. In a July 2018 panel on fake news in Moscow moderated by RT editor-in-chief Margarita Simonian, Greenwald argued that the Democrats' focus on Russian interference in the 2016 election is motivated by a need to rationalize Clinton's loss. He told The New Yorker in August 2018, Let's just get along with the Russians has been turned into something treasonous. Of Trump, he commented, even if he has weird dealings with Russia, I still think it's in everybody's interest not to teach an entire new generation of people, becoming interested in politics for the first time, that the Russians are demons. He said that both Trump and Jill Stein were being vilified for advocating ways to reduce U.S. Russian tensions and told Democracy Now! that the Putin Trump summit in Helsinki during July 2018 was excellent idea. While his intercept colleague James Risen considered Trump's decision to meet Putin alone was at best reckless. 
Susan Hennessy, a NSA lawyer at the time of Snowden's NSA revelations, told Marcy Wheeler writing for The New Republic in January 2018, that Greenwald was only relaying surface commentary, rather than evidence for or against Russian interference in the 2016 election. Tamsin Shaw wrote in the New York Review of Books in September 2018. Greenwald has repeatedly, in the face of overwhelming evidence to the contrary, decried as Russophobia the findings that Putin ordered interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Greenwald remained doubtful of assertions that the Trump presidential campaign worked with the Russians after the release of the letter about the Mueller's findings from Attorney General William Barr in late March 2019. He called the investigation a scam and a fraud from the beginning. In an appearance on Democracy Now!, Greenwald told Tucker Carlson on Fox News, Let me just say, MSNBC should have the top host on primetime go before the cameras and hang their head in shame and apologize for lying to people for three straight years, exploiting their fears to great profit. After the release of special counsel Robert Mueller's report, on April 22 he complained that the press continued to promote the conspiracy theory that Trump's campaign conspired with Russia during the 2016 presidential campaign. <inaudible> Israel and the United States Greenwald is critical of Israel's foreign policy and influence on U.S. politics, a stance for which he has in turn been the subject of criticism. He is also a frequent critic of the Israeli occupation of the West Bank. In an exchange with Greenwald in February 2019, Representative Ilan Omar, D. Min, tweeted, It's all about the Benjamin's baby, in reference to American politicians' support for Israel and invoked the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. Many Democratic leaders including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, condemned the tweet, which was interpreted as implying that money was fueling American politicians' support of Israel. Greenwald defended Ilan Omar, saying that we're not allowed to talk about well-organized and well-financed lobby that ensures a bipartisan consensus in support of U.S. defense of Israel, that the minute that you mention that lobby, you get attacked as being anti-Semitic, which is what happened to Congresswoman Omar. Julian Assange In a November 2018 Guardian article Luke Harding and Dan Collins cited anonymous sources which stated that Trump's former campaign manager Paul Manafort held secret meetings with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange inside the Ecuadorian embassy in London in 2013, 2015, and 2016. Greenwald said that if Manafort had entered the Ecuadorian consulate there would be evidence from the surrounding cameras. Greenwald, a former contributor to The Guardian, believes that the paper has such a pervasive and unprofessionally personal hatred for Julian Assange that it has frequently dispensed with all journalistic standards in order to malign him. In April 2019, Greenwald condemned the arrest of Julian Assange, tweeting, if you're a U.S. media star who has spent two years claiming to be so concerned about press freedoms over Trump's mean tweets about your friends, but don't raise your voice in protest over this grave attack on press freedom, take a hard look in the mirror. Greenwald criticized the government's decision to charge Assange under the Espionage Act of 1917 for his role in the 2010 publication of the Iraq War documents leak. Greenwald wrote for the Washington Post, the Trump administration has undoubtedly calculated that Assange's uniquely unpopular status across the political spectrum in the United States makes him the ideal test case for creating a precedent that criminalizes the defining attributes of investigative journalism. Topic: Brazil 
Greenwald has been critical of Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro, a right-wing politician criticized for misogynistic, homophobic, anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim views who has been embraced by the Trump administration as an ally and partner, saying that Bolsonaro is "...often depicted wrongly in the Western media as being Brazil's Trump." He's actually much closer to, say, Filipino President Duterte or even the Egyptian dictator General El Sisi in terms of what he believes and what he's probably capable of carrying out. Greenwald said that Bolsonaro could be a good partner for President Trump. If you think that the U.S. should go back to kind of the Monroe Doctrine as national security advisor John Bolton talked openly about, and ruling Latin America, and U.S. interests. Reception Greenwald has been placed on numerous top 50 and top 25 lists of columnists in the United States. In June 2012, Newsweek magazine named him one of America's top ten opinionists, saying that, "...a righteous, controlled, and razor-sharp fury runs through a great deal..." of his writing, and, "...his independent persuasion can make him a danger or an asset to both sides of the aisle." According to Nate Anderson, writing in Ars Technica around 2010 or 2011, Aaron Barr of HB Gary and Team Themis planned to damage Greenwald's career as a way to respond to a potential dump of Bank of America documents by WikiLeaks, saying that, "...without the support of people like Glenn WikiLeaks would fold." Josh Voorhees, writing for Slate, reported that in 2013 Congressman Peter King RNY suggested Greenwald should be arrested for his reporting on the NSA PRISM program and NSA leaker Edward Snowden. Journalist Andrew Ross Sorkin said, I would arrest Snowden and now I'd almost arrest Glenn Greenwald, but later made an apology for his statement, which Greenwald accepted. Journalist David Gregory accused Greenwald of aiding and abetting Snowden, before asking, Why shouldn't you, Mr. Greenwald, be charged with a crime? In a 2013 interview with Martha Radatz of ABC News, Greenwald said that members of Congress are not being told, The most basic information about what NSA is doing and spying on American citizens and what the FISA court has been doing in terms of declaring some of some of this illegal, some of it legal. Another participant was Representative Dutch Ruppersberger DMD, who at the time was the ranking member of the United States House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. House Intelligence Committee. He responded, We have rules as far as the committee and what you can have and what you cannot have. However, based on that, that statement I just made, is that since this incident occurred with Snowden, we've had three different hearings for members of our Democratic caucus, and the Republican caucus What we're trying to do now is to get the American public to know more about what's going on. Representative King, who was also a guest on this week as a ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, stated, T oh me it's unprecedented to have all of these top people from an administration during this time of crisis still come in and answer question after question after question. So anyone who says that Congress is somehow being stonewalled is just wrong and the question is generally, I think, raised by people who are trying to make a name for themselves. In a February 2014 interview, Greenwald said he believed he risked detention if he re-entered the U.S., but insisted that he would force the issue on principle, and return for the many reasons he had to visit, including if he won a prestigious award of which he was rumored to be the winner. Later that month, it was announced that he was, in fact, among the recipients of the 2013 Polk Awards, to be conferred April 11, 2014 in Manhattan. In a subsequent interview, Greenwald stated he would attend the ceremony, and added, I absolutely refuse to be exiled from my own country for the crime of doing journalism and I'm going to force the issue just on principle. 
and I think going back for a ceremony like the Polk Awards or other forms of journalistic awards would be a really good symbolic test of having to put the government in the position of having to arrest journalists who are coming back to the U.S. to receive awards for the journalism they have done. On April 11, Greenwald and Laura Poitras accepted the Polk Award in Manhattan. Although their entry into the United States was trouble-free, they traveled with an ACLU attorney and a German journalist to document any unpleasant surprises. Accepting the award, Greenwald said he was happy to see a table full of Guardian editors and journalists, whose role in this story is much more integral than the publicity generally recognizes. On April 14, the Pulitzer Prize for Public Service was awarded jointly to The Guardian and The Washington Post for revelation of widespread secret surveillance by the NSA. Greenwald, along with Laura Poitras and Ewan McCaskill, had contributed to The Guardian's reporting. Topic. Personal life Greenwald lives in Rio de Janeiro, the hometown of his husband, David Miranda. Greenwald said in 2011 that his residence in Brazil was a result of the Defense of Marriage Act, an American law barring federal recognition of same-sex marriages that was overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court two years later. The law had prevented his partner from receiving a visa to reside with him in the United States. The first day Greenwald entered Rio de Janeiro in February 2005, he met Miranda at the beach. As Miranda was playing volleyball, his ball knocked over Greenwald's drink. When asked by a user on Twitter, Greenwald said this was how he met Miranda for the first time. In 2017, Greenwald and Miranda announced that they had adopted two children, siblings, from Maceo, a city in northeastern Brazil. Greenwald and Miranda have 24 rescue dogs. In March 2017, Greenwald announced plans to build a shelter with Miranda for stray pets in Brazil that would be staffed by homeless people. In March 2018, Greenwald tweeted videos showing the shelter as operational with dozens of pets and previously homeless employees. In 2016, Miranda was elected to the Rio de Janeiro City Council as part of the PSOL party. In 2018, he narrowly lost election to Congress, but in 2019 assumed the place of Gene Wiley's after Willys's self-exile. Greenwald and Miranda were close personal friends of Brazilian human rights advocate and councilwoman Marielle Franco, known for criticism of police tactics, who was fatally shot while in her car by unknown assailants. Greenwald comes from a Jewish background, albeit largely non-practicing, and was never bar mitzvah, stating that, My parents tried to inculcate me a little bit into organized Judaism, but they weren't particularly devoted to that, and my grandparents were, but it just never took hold. He says that he does believe in the spiritual and mystical part of the world, including practicing yoga, but his moral precepts aren't informed in any way by religious doctrine or, like, organized religion or anything. Greenwald has also been critical of the New Atheist Movement, accusing Sam Harris and others within the movement, of anti-Muslim animus. <laughs> <laughs> Awards Greenwald received, together with Amy Goodman, the first Izzy Award for Special Achievement in Independent Media, in 2009, and the 2010 Online Journalism Award for Best Commentary for his investigative work on the conditions of Chelsea Manning. His reporting on the National Security Agency NSA won numerous other awards around the world, including top investigative journalism prizes from the George Polk Award for National Security Reporting, the 2013 Online Journalism Awards, the S Award for Excellence in Reporting in Brazil for his articles in O Globo on NSA Mass Surveillance of Brazilians becoming the first foreigner to win the award, the 2013 Libertad de Expression International Award from Argentinian magazine Perfil, and the 2013 Pioneer Award from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The team that Greenwald led at The Guardian was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Public Service for their reporting on the NSA. 
Foreign Policy magazine then named him one of the top 100 global thinkers of 2013. In 2014, Greenwald received the Geschwister Scholl Prize, an annual German literary award, for the German edition of No Place to Hide. Greenwald was also named the 2014 recipient of the McGill Medal for Journalistic Courage from the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication. Topic. Books 2014 No Place to Hide, Edward Snowden, The NSA, and the U.S. Surveillance State. Metropolitan Books, Div, of Henry Holt and Company, ISBN 1-6277-9073-X-10, ISBN 978-1-6277-9073-4-13. With Liberty and Justice for Some, How the Law is Used to Destroy Equality and Protect the Powerful. Metropolitan Books, Div, of Henry Holt and Company, ISBN 0-8050-9205-6-10. ISBN 978-0-8050-9205-9-13. 2008 Great American Hypocrites, Toppling the Big Myths of Republican Politics. New York, Random House, ISBN 0-307-40802-7-10, ISBN 978-0-307-40802-0-13. Also available as an e-book 2007 A Tragic Legacy, How a Good vs. Evil Mentality Destroyed the Bush Presidency. New York, Crown, Div, of Random House, ISBN 0 307 35419 9 10, ISBN 978 0 307 35419 8 13. Hardback Ed, Three Rivers Press, 2008, ISBN 0 307 35428 8 10, ISBN 978 0 307 35428 0 13. Paperback Ed 2006 How Would a Patriot Act? Defending American Values from a President Run Amok. San Francisco, Working Assets, Distrib. By Publishers Group West, ISBN 0 9779440 X 10, ISBN 978 0 9779440 2 13.